Hi, Cy here from Music Radar. Today I'm joined by Cy Trust from Future Hi. Music, and we are taking a look at Novation's Circuit Mono Station. Yep, new analog synth for Novation. Uh, let's start by just going through a few sounds uh, and patches. So, Mono Station is a synth with sequencer built in. We hit sessions here, we've got some pre made sessions. Sessions are uh, basically a combination of a sound and a sequence. Mm -hmm. So let's hit play and listen to a few and tweak a few parameters. Okay, so that's how it sounds. Um, so Circuit Mono Station is basically the bastard son of Circuit and a base station too. Yeah, so these two products from Novation, Circuit came out uh, end of 2015, I think. Yeah. A cool little groove box with two digital synth engines and four channels of sampling. Mm -hmm. uh, we really liked Circuit at the time, mostly because it's really accessible and immediate, and I really like the sequencer on it. You could do a lot quite quickly with it. Yeah. Base Station, again, another product that we liked when it was announced, yeah. Base Station 2, which is a update to the original Base Station, mm -hmm. which is kind of 90s yeah, classic. Stone Cold classic. Yeah, one. so Base Station 2 is a sort of portable size, uh, nice monophonic uh, bass synth, yeah. analog mm -hmm. bass synth. So effectively, this is combined the two. So you've got the nice little immediate fun sequencer of circuit yeah. combined with the analog synth engine of yeah. Base Station 2. And I know it's called Mono Station. It's technically paraphonic. Yeah. Talk so, us through that. So paraphonic, because uh, it can be a little bit confusing. So yeah. you've got a monophonic synth is one that can play only one note at a time. Yeah. Um, a polyphonic synth is a synthesizer that can play multiple notes using different synth voices. Mm -hmm. And paraphonic is kind of in between the two. So paraphonic means that you can play two notes. Yeah. You've got two oscillators here. You can yeah. play two different pitches using those oscillators. Uh -huh. But those. Uh, notes are both going through the same amp envelope and same filter. Sure, yeah, so basically yeah. what you're doing is you're kind of splitting the synth engine. And then putting it back together again. But yeah, yeah, allowing you to play two notes. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so let's dive into how this thing works. Um, talk us through a bit of um, how kind of, you know, all the presets are hiding, you know, how, how to kind cool. of get started with it. So as we mentioned at the start of the video, uh, you've got sessions first. So sessions, there's a 16 provided by Novation and 16 empty slots. Okay. A session is basically a uh, save combination of a sequence and a sound. Uh -huh. Then you've got your sequences under patterns here, um, and then your sounds under patches. So there's uh, 64 preset patches on board. Yeah. Um, let's uh, initialize a patch and we'll go through the synth engine and have a look at what's going on. Great, yeah. So starting with an empty slot we've made here. So as I said, there's two oscillators. Mm -hmm. Um, oscillator one, oscillator two. This um, pattern sequence, so we can sequence both oscillators separately okay. or together, and we also get a modulation sequencer, which we'll come back to later. Sure. So start on left, let's just, um, what I'll do is I'll just quickly, uh, actually let's open an empty session, empty patch. So we're completely got Free nothing. of anything, there's nothing in there. Yep, we will just, um, touch program a really basic little synth sequence here. Mm -hmm. See how that sounds. Yeah, really basic little sequence yeah. going on. Uh, so this is, um, oscillator one is the only one in play at the moment. We've got four different shapes. We've got um, 
a uh, pulse width variable square wave, yeah. uh, sine wave, triangle, saw and wave, sort, sort it, yeah. and then obviously we can set our pitch range here. Uh -huh. um, pitch controls, coarse pitch control, and fine tune for the pitch, sure. uh, which also doubles up as a pulse width control. Okay, that's using the shift button there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, using the shift button. Yeah. Um, so there's quite a lot of shift presses on here, but it's all quite nicely laid out. Yeah, sure. Which, again, we'll kind of come to in a bit. There's only two levels you can do, yep. with or without. The so yeah. let's dial in the second oscillator. Mm -hmm. um, it, we hit oscillator two here. You'll notice that this is green, and this is kind of pinky purple. Um, the colours here all corresponds to which oscillator you're controlling, which one keeps it handy. nice and easy. Yeah, so, yeah. so you'll see um, in the modulation matrix here when we select our different oscillators, you know these change are. color. Anything orange is basically a global parameter, sure, so right. it's not dependent on which oscillator you're using. Okay. All right, so di dial in a sequence so, on oscillator two then. So, well, oscillator two, well, let's keep it doing the exact same thing for the okay, time Okay, so being. You're just doubling it up. Yeah, so this, we're just using it as a monosynth for the moment. Um, and we can tweak this a bit. Next, we've got a filter. Uh, multi mode filter, so we've got low pass, band pass, and high pass yep. settings. Um, 12 and 14 dB slopes mm -hmm. um, with cut off resonance and this nice overdrive here, which basically means we can drive the sound into the filter to uh, give it a bit of extra whack. Yep. So let's keep this in low pass mode for the moment with a nice little bit of resonance. Uh, now back in the mixer section here, we've also got a sub oscillator. Cool. So yep. dial that in for a bit of low end weight. Also add noise. There's also an audio input. So there's um, audio at the back here. Yeah. So if we wanted to, we could also pump an external Something audio in, uh, input in, and we can use that to process external audio through the distortion and filters. Filters, yeah, cool. Cool little track. Uh, ring mod as well, if we want to modulate uh, oscillator 2 by oscillator 1. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice also there on the filter is this bypass switch here. So what this can do is it means we can have the noise input bypassing the filter. Okay. Or we can have oscillator 2 bypassing the filter. Or we can have both noise and oscillator 2 by right. bypassing like that. So. Uh, let's keep it like that for a moment. So next, distortion. There's three different types of distortion mm -hmm. uh, on board, um, all with a kind of slightly different character uh, from kind of high gainy, gritty kind of things to sort of more meaty and subtle distortion. Again, combined with the um, yeah. overdrive of the filter here. Cooking it at both ends. Yeah, well. you can kind of grit things up quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. So, envelope section uh, and modulation matrix. Mm -hmm. So, what we do here is we can set various parts of the synth engine to modulate and control various other parts. Yeah. So obviously the envelope um, is most obviously used as a uh, controller for the amp section, mm -hmm. which is what we've got it set up to here. So we can, but we can turn that off and we could have it modulating the filter like this here. Okay. Or pitch. Let's um, leave it as a amp envelope for the moment. Mm -hmm. You'll note also that these um, uh, lights under each control get kind of brighter and dimmer as depending on what we're controlling, okay. which is kind of handy for keeping a bit of a track, particularly if you're jumping between patches and between oscillators. You know where quite, is. Yeah, 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 know where yeah, everything is. Yeah. Uh, so we've got an LFO as well. Again, using the mod matrix, we can route this to different things. So let's have some LFO to the filter. Uh, that's syncable different wave shapes and a kind of start up and a hold for some kind of randomization. Yeah. Let's, um...
So we've got our other destinations here. So we've got pitch and pulse width modulation for both oscillators, and we can set these separately mm -hmm. by um, hitting both the oscillator one and oscillator two module. Yeah. Uh, amp envelope fil filter distortion, and then there's a CV output as well, so we can send the mod matrix out to a uh, external CV. Yeah, yeah, good. So the other, the input wise, we've got the envelope, which we've seen here, uh, the LFO just here. Uh, the next is the sequencer. So uh, just like we have, um, let's pull that down a bit for a second. So um, uh, for modulation inputs, we've already seen the envelope generator there and the yep. LFO. So the next one is the sequencer. Uh -huh. So we hit mod sequence here. We've got, again, the sequencer, just like we were sequencing the oscillator pitch before, use the same kind of sequencer grid to basically uh, modulate anything, any of these destinations in the matrix yep. here. Okay. So if we, for example, let's just um, dial in some random amounts on a few random steps um, and then if we select sequencer and yep. let's uh, send that to pitch just so we can hear so that's oscillator one pitch as you can hear there uh, let's have it maybe a little bit something a bit more musical yeah so there we go we've got sequenced um yeah we've sequenced the filter cut off there okay. Um, so the next uh, thing in our modulation matrix is velocity, yeah, which brings us basically down to the sequencer again. Okay. So obviously at the moment all we've been doing is inputting a few notes. Mm -hmm. um, down here we've also got, uh, as well as our note window, uh, we've got velocity and we've got gate. So velocity, we can uh, set velocity levels for each note. And then we can route where that velocity is going. So obviously the kind of traditional type thing is to have that towards amp envelopes so that it's um, giving our notes sort of different volumes. Yep. But we don't have to do that. We can set it to pulse width, distortion, pitch as well. Yeah. Um, and there's some other tricks we can do with the sequencer down here as well. So, uh, on a shift press, we've also got glide. So we can set kind of portmanteau between notes. Mm -hmm. And also we don't have to play the synth like a sequencer. Um, hitting note and shift uh, gives us our sequencer grid here. So we can kind of, if you want to play across more notes. Yeah. You'll note obviously we've got, um, eight pads, which doesn't necessarily look like a musical keyboard. Sure. Um, that's because this is in scale mode. So there's, uh, just w as with circuit, the original circuit, there's um, a whole variety of onboard scales. Yeah. Um, including a chromatic mode if we just want to yeah. have things sure. represented like sure. a piano yeah, keyboard. Yeah. You can't um, hit a wrong note, so, so Yeah, so but we can easily flip through different scales yeah. uh, and kind of different major and minor. Mm -hmm. uh, keys and notes quite easily. Mm -hmm. um, so, as I mentioned before, we can sequence oscillator two separately. Yeah. So, let's have a little go at doing that. Let's open up the filter just so we can hear what's going on a bit better. Um, so obviously we've got a monophonic sequence going on at the moment. Let's hit record. Obviously here, you're here we've got a kind of paraphonic yeah, yeah. thing going on there. Let's um, get rid of some of the notes. Um, hitting shift, we've got, um, you'll see a button up here that says paraphonic. That's because there's two different modes for the way the um, paraphonic synth engine works in here. Okay. Uh, it's not really, it's a bit misleading. You'd think it would be turning off kind of paraphonic modes on and off. No. It's not. Basically, Mono station is always paraphonic, so you, if you sequence something on oscillator two, it would always always play two pitches. Mm -hmm. However, what this does is change whether that uh, oscillator two sequence triggers the envelope. Oh, okay. So basically, right. whether the amp envelope is uh, being opened up when you trigger 
a second note, uh, a note on the Oscillator 2 or whether they are just blending in with the original ones. So, yeah. as you can hear, can't turn it on and off. Uh, so there's also a couple more things we can do with the sequencer, which, as I kind of said, is surprisingly, as with circ the original circuit, it's kind of surprisingly deep, actually. Yeah, it looks yeah, pretty really. simple, but there's a lot you can do. Yeah, yeah. So in pattern settings here, uh, we can set uh, different uh, note rates for each um, sequence. We can also uh, change directions, so we can have patterns going uh, forwards, backwards, yeah. or kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. Also down here we can set um, the length of our patterns, so basically we can have uh, sequences of different lengths, so actually yeah. you can kind of get polyrhythmic things yeah, going yeah, on with oscillator great. one, oscillator two. Yeah. Um, we've kind of thrown everything at this um, synth patch now, so it's starting to sound a little bit over the top <laughs> and horrible, so uh, let's... Let's start uh, a new one, start fresh. Uh, so as well as being able to um, sequence sounds, uh, sequence each oscillator yeah. and play each oscillator um, like we're showing you uh, on the grid. You can also, because it's paraphonic, you can play it paraphonically yeah. from a single grid. So what we do is hit uh, both oscillators once. Okay, so now it's split. Yeah, so we've got our kind of pinky purple oscillator one and our green um, second oscillator there, yeah. which basically means we can play two note chords using the paraphonic synth engine. Yeah, so simply by yeah. holding down a note on each row. Yeah, which is quite a nice little touch for being able to play these kind of like very simple pad sounds and stuff yeah, like yeah, that and good. like kind of basic you know, chords. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, so that's um, the bulk of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, if we uh, go into patterns as well, you'll see obviously at the moment we've just been doing kind of single 16 step patterns. Yeah. Uh, you have these full banks here. So uh, not only can you kind of save um, and duplicate patterns. So for instance, our oscillator one pattern here, if we just hit shift and clear to duplicate, we can copy that over. Yeah. Now we've got two instances of it. Instances of it. If we hold those down together, that's now um, we're chaining those together. Yeah, okay. So um, start building songs obviously we can do that on yeah. um, oscillator one, oscillator two, and on the modulation oh, cool. um, yeah. sequencer. And as I said, we can have different lengths for um, each pattern. You can have Different lengths, different directions. Yeah. So actually, the sequence a, a is a it. lot more complicated than you might yeah, initially yeah. Yeah. think. Mm -hmm. um, we also, uh, fire thing did mention, is tempo up here with um, built-in swing control. Oh, cool. So, and also tap tempo. Right. So, um, other thing I sort of alluded to earlier, um, is the uh, CV output. Yes. So we have um, some nice analog outputs along the back. We've got- It's CV. got quite a few out there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so we've got um, clock input and output, we've yeah. got MIDI in and out, mm -hmm. um, we've got CV, um, CV gate, and um, an auxiliary CV. Oh, so cool. basically what you can do is um, use this to power most kind of hardware synths or a modular rig. Um, and as I've said, the auxiliary CV. You, you, you can, the matrix. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, the audio input as well, so mm -hmm. we can run external audio through the filter, through these three distortions and the overdrive and all yep. that. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a lot going on. You can even also we've got this nice headphone output in the front, yep. um, which we're using to monitor at the moment. But if we weren't, we could um, output that and put it back into the audio interface, uh, yep. audio input for some. Yep. Nice bit Some of grittiness. Long, yeah, so, so there is a lot going on, basically. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good overview of what everything does. But there is one little thing that you've you've going to mention now. Yep. Also, so almost the cherry on the yeah. Lo the loads of great modulation stuff I've already yeah. seen. Uh, arguably, uh, the the coolest part is that you can actually automate pretty much everything on here as well. So uh, we've got a little one of the obvious um, where the sessions built in. Yeah. Hit record, start tweaking things, you'll see that the light underneath this filter is going to turn red. That's because we're just recording a bit of automation. Yeah. Do the same on. And it's on everything. It's on. Basically, presses, an anything lock. here with a. Um, uh, anything backlit with a light here. Yeah. We can. Um, 
uh, record a bit of automation to, Brilliant. which is great. So that can, that kind of adds up to, uh, just to kind of recap, so effectively you've got uh, sequence of tracks for oscillator one, sequence of track for oscillator two, you've got a modulation sequencer, yeah. you've got an envelope um, that you can route within the modulation matrix, you've got a single, uh, multi-mode single LFO, um, we've got velocity we can send into modulation matrix, and yep. then you can also automate everything. So actually, shit loads of sound control. Absolutely, on tons. Yeah. Let's have a listen to some more presets. Uh, let's more go through presets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what see what she's got going on inside. So let's uh, boot up. Um, let's just go with another session. All in all, what Monostation can do is quite a bit because the power of the circuit kind of sequencing yep. doubled up with, I know it's only a monophonic, you know, synth engine, but I mean, it's still, there's a lot of flexibility going on, especially with the mod, you know, the modulation matrix. Yeah, and the um, the kind of MIDI and uh, uh, CV. And yeah, I mean, these, these are things we're starting to see the kind of more, more standard specs now. Yeah, hardware. which is good. It's the... That sort of flexibility where you don't get um, just a bit of CV added as a novelty thing. It's yeah. kind of more actually geared up to yeah. sequence the, I say modern, obviously modern is a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, yeah, it's studios of today and in integrating it to like, you know, with as much gear as possible. Yeah. Because it's all out Which there is and great. everyone's using it. So that's brilliant. Um, let's talk price. Yeah. So £479. Yep, four hundred seventy nine pounds. Which uh, so that puts it on exactly the same price as the recent Pioneer A uh, Pioneer DJ AS one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which we talked about in a recent video. Uh -huh. um, so, and that's actually quite a, an interesting comparison for this because they're both, although they kind of look different and do different things, they're both uh, kind of monophonic or well paraphonic yeah. um, synthesizers yeah. with kind of built around a sequencer. Which is a little bit different from some of the things we've seen in the kind of compact yeah. synth world. So arguably, circuit compare if we're doing a direct comparison, circuit sequencer is more powerful than AS ones, but yeah. the AS ones sort of engine, the sound engine, is slightly better than this. Well, say. yeah, I mean, like obviously, as we've heard, this sounds really nice. Yeah, absolutely. for my money, I'd say arguably the AS one sounds a little better, probably just because of the built-in effects, and this sure. doesn't have that. Sure. Um, and also, you know, the kind of Dave Smith innards of the Pioneer AS one. Yeah, okay, you can't yeah, really knock. Yeah, yeah. That, that 
that's definitely not to say that we don't think this sounds great. Because it does what I do you think, can tell it sounds But as I say, it kind of, you don't get the built-in effects, yeah. which is probably something you'd want to add. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the sequencer here is great. Yeah. Um, comparing it to some other things, um, I mean, sonically, it's probably on a par with things like um, the Korg monologue, monologue yeah, or course. the kind of Arturia kind of uh, mini or micro brutes, yeah. which um, all of which are a bit cheaper. So mm -hmm. Similarly, the base station two, which is obviously the basis for this, is about hundred quid cheaper. So if it's just the sound you're after, you, there are there are cheap things. There come cheaper things. However, what this the has sequencer, got going for it? Yeah. So those three, those multi channels of yeah. uh, sequencing, mm -hmm. all the modulation. The kind of outputs, the inputs, uh, do make it something completely unique. Absolutely. And, and I mean, the big thing about Circuit is that Novation have done a cracking job in extending its lifespan. Yeah, so that's that's another thing definitely worth mentioning is yeah. that um, since the original Circuit came out about 18 months ago, yeah. um, Novation have brought out a lot of updates and really supported the product. So obviously in the music tech and synthesizer world, you, there's some companies that are really good at this, some are really bad, some stuff, some products will land in a kind of all right state, some land in a sort of rough edge state, yeah. and then will not get the updates they deserve. Exactly, yeah. Circuit, yeah. The original circuit, however, loads has been added by Novation since they first brought out. So they're still they doing first it, add, still Yeah, more, they first yeah, added yeah. sample, upload, uh, then they're kind of librarian, uh -huh. and uh, they kind of tweak the sequencer and what it can do. So like kudos to them, because that's, that's really yeah. good, and that's what we want to see. And that really kind of gives users even more for their money. So components, which is their software application that they brought out for Circuit, yeah. um, that works with this as well. Course, We've not had yeah, a chance yeah. to try it yet, but effectively that gives you this librarian, so it, can, it massively increases the amount of sounds and yeah. sequences you can save. Um, it does a few other things and probably will do some more things in the future. Um, but... Like I said, we haven't had a chance no, to try sure. it yet. Well, it's worth knowing though. So if you are looking to buy something and you've got that sort of money of this ilk, it's definitely worth giving Circuit uh, Monostation a go just because you know that the, the life of it, there's a good chance that they're going to be, you know, keep updating this for at least another 12 months. So, yeah, well, fingers crossed they'll, they'll give it a similar extended lifespan. Yeah, yeah. Um, so minor criticisms yeah. to kind of pull up. Uh, you could arguably say that one envelope is a little bit limited compared to some other mono synths around the same price. So maybe obviously, two. Obviously it's a bit of a much of a muchness because you've got this modulation matrix so you can work around it nicely with the sequencer and there's, you can kind of do all the same sort of things. The other thing is, although actually uh, they have done a kind of, a really good job of um, kind of labeling stuff using these various lights and colors and stuff, sure. can get a little bit confusing occasionally when you're programming stuff and particularly if you flip between patches, the modulation matrix in particular because obviously you've got uh, you've got four inputs, you've got these kind of six outputs. You're flipping between different things um, at different uh, depth levels. Can be quite easy once you've started modulating a few things to get a bit lost. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, one yeah. thing I would like, which I think, as far as I know, Novation are actually going to bring in an, in the next firmware update, which may even be um, out by the time you watch this, is the ability to kind of clear that and also clear synth parameters a oh, bit easier. Nice. So you've kind of got a bit of a panic button. Yeah. Because one thing I found is, as you kind of saw when we were building a sound earlier, is you can quite easily just start throwing just everything at it and get a little bit lost back, quite easily. You can't get back to where you were. Yeah. 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 Also, I mean, for uh, similar reasons, uh, the original circuit has got a uh, editor application created yep. by Isotonic, a third party company, but mm -hmm. kind of spec by Innovation. Yeah. Um, It'd be quite nice to see a similar thing for this. I mean, you don't really need it in the same way because the original circuit was kind of macro controls and had a lot of hidden stuff. Sure. There's no hidden parameters here. No, no. But it's... maybe being able to see some of those sequences and modulation stuff on a laptop screen occasionally might, might, might get your head around it a bit, but, a bit quicker sort of thing, yeah. Um, but yeah, kind of not essential. Yeah. But yeah, a few really minor little things there, but generally, I'm really impressed with this. Yeah, I think it's really, really good. Um, for just shy of 500 quid, it's definitely worth checking out. Mm -hmm. um, whether you get on with the sequencer compared to a traditional keyboard or a kind of different synths and different yeah, things yeah, yeah. is, you know, a matter of taste, but definitely not one to overlook. Definitely. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Cool. Okay, so that's it. Um, hopefully that gives you sort of a brief outline of what uh, Monostation is all about. And we, we hope you agree there's 
quite a lot going on in this little box. Um, so be sure to like, subscribe and comment wherever you've seen this video right now and head on over to musicradar.com for all the latest news, reviews and tutorials. Cheers. Thanks.